K-I-L-R Taylor Games and uh, maybe some of you rare pilots out there <laughs> who might actually be watching this. I am the Killer Gamer and welcome to Flight Simulator 2 version 1.0 <laughs> for the Commodore 64. Oh my goodness, this goes back in time. Um, yeah, uh, this brings back a lot of memories. I, uh, if I move this, well, okay, good. I'm like, I need to move this on my screen so that way it's centered. I want to make sure it wasn't moving on my recording software. Oh, my goodness. I grew up with this. This is my very first flight simulator right here. It's on the Commodore 64. And I figured it might be kind of neat to start a world tour series and just kind of do it with kind of old school with the Commodore 64 and and just kind of do it with the other flight simulators I mean why not I don't know if there's gonna be much interest in it but someone out there might like it <clears throat> so well here we are so we have to choose color TV or composite monitor or black and white TV or monitor. I think we'll choose color uh, we can do demo mode or we can do regular flight mode. Well, we'll we're going to do regular, so. Now we just got to wait for it to load. Maximum 1541 speed! Yes, this is an emulator that I'm using. There is no way that I could be sitting here recording with OBS uh, and a Commodore 64 at the same time. <laughs> Okay, so here we are at uh, Chicago Meg's Field. So, yeah, nice and green, green runway here. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the old fashioned map. Here we are. And we're just going to zoom in here. Okay, so here we are, Merle C. Meggs, uh, CT121.3, I forgot what in the world that stands for, Control Tower 121.3, that's what that stood for. Okay, let's see, how do we change the comm radios, it was Control C... Yeah, there we go. 120. Well, you can't see it. Hold on. There we go. 121. And then... Point three. Let's see what this says. Meg's Field Information X-Ray 1300 Zulu Weather Visibility 10 Temperature 56 Wind 0 at 0 Oh, that disappeared real quickly. Okay. <laughs> now, if we wanted to... Oh my goodness, this is so old-fashioned. Okay, so if we wanted to... I have no idea what just happened here. I'm trying to pull up the that's what I'm trying to pull up okay so you had to really change things uh, around here uh, there's no mouse you had to do this all by hand so 
if you wanted to change to another airport uh, you have to type in the north and the east position which we pull up the map here again if you scroll this way this gives you the north and east position so you'd have to actually type this out and type out the uh, the altitude so that way you don't like crash um, all these little stars here have fuel boxes um, otherwise uh, there I don't think there's a way to add fuel I don't think let me see pitch bank airspeed throttle flaps elevators this is how you change the uh, the time season I forgot what season 4 was and this is how you change uh, you add your cloud layers and stuff and winds and then you can change uh, your reliability as far as like you know are your instruments going to break down or anything like that and uh, ADF and enable I think you have to turn this on and then it changes one of your uh, VOR radios to an ADF is what that does if I remember correctly um, user mode I forgot what that does we'll figure this out when we when we go back through it again Europe uh, 1917 was like that war game reality mode this does it to where the um, the fuel when you run out of fuel your um, well you run out of fuel <laughs> um, I don't think we'll worry too much about that um, it also makes it to where your airlines and your rudder, rudder are separate and this thing is hard enough to control as it is on a keyboard so um, and forget about a, a joystick because yeah all right so let's let's get out of here man why is it doing this it didn't do this before when I was messing around with it Okay, so where are we going to go? That's the question. Well, you always started off here at Merrill C. Meg's. Um, I figure, uh, why don't we do a short flight and fly over here to Chicago O'Hare International? What do you think? We'll go over here. All right, so let's we'll take a look at the ATIS uh, 135.15. I forgot what is this 667-116. Those meant something. I have to look up and find out what in the world this stood for. Ah, oh, I can't remember what those. It'll come back to me. It'll come back to me. All right, so. see what the ATIS has to say as far as the uh, landing runway it was 135 well I didn't like that oh my goodness it's going all over the <laughs> stop there it goes okay I don't think that ever happened on a Commodore 64. <laughs> it was going all over the place. All right, 135.15. Okay. Oh, here, International Airport. Information, Bravo, visibility, 10, landing, departing, runway, 4. If 
device controller and initial contact you have Bravo all right but well, we have no way to contact them so okay so now what we're going to do is set our VOR to 113.9 There it goes. Are we going to get distance on this? Doesn't look like it. It should be a DME, so I don't know why we're not getting distance on that. All right. And we want to fly to it, so what did they say? Runway 4? So I guess we'll, we'll set this up for runway 4 then. zero that should be good enough we shouldn't have to really do much of anything else I guess we could let's see there's the do page here I'll put put the map up back up again so we're gonna we're, we're gonna come out here and fly this way um, I suppose what we'll do is we'll s we'll select the do page vor and we'll we'll catch the um, the 270 radial on this and we'll fly out this way until we catch the uh, 040 radial and then come into Chicago here so that's what we'll do. Now we got to do uh, let's see control okay there it is we want 108 I think it's too far away. It's too far away. We can't catch it. Okay. All right. Man, these old planes. <laughs> these old planes. Okay. Um, well, we'll go ahead and we'll... Uh, we'll put it on here anyway. Who knows? Maybe when we'll fly, we'll, it'll... It'll come on and we'll catch it. So let's see, we want two and I'll we'll select two seventy. Oh, so it did did work actually. Well, here comes the fun part. Now we're going to take off. So let's let's get to it.
clicking sound. And we'll just go ahead and turn this way. That's the Sears Tower. And those sticks are supposed to be buildings. So we can look out uh, the side there, our views. trying to get ste uh, steady flight on this was, was a bit of a challenge without it uh, bouncing up and down and stuff. Okay, so there we go. There's our DME. We're only 10 miles away from uh, O'Hare. I had I had all the scenery discs for for this, um, and I used to fly from one side to uh, from the coast of the U.S. to the other. Man, I was excited when I had that when I could actually fly from one state to another. Of course. There was not a whole lot of airports at the time, but but we'll we're gonna do that on this. I checked on YouTube to see if anyone was actually doing this, and no one is. So hey, here we go. <laughs> we're gonna do it. We're gonna do this. We have a trip down memory lane. When did this come out? 1984? That was a good album by Van Halen. <laughs> I had just turned a teenager. I was 13. This is B. 
big stuff. And I was playing this thing a lot. And the Commodore 64, that was our family computer. And then when the Commodore Amiga came out, or at least the uh, Amiga 500, that, that was my that was my very first personal computer. And then I one of the first first games I got for it was Flight Simulator 2. And I tell you what, it was definitely an improvement over this one. But it was still made by Sublogic. And I flied, um, I flied that one a good, good bit too. It did not have the uh, all the scenery discs though, like this one did. It had some of them, but it didn't have like all of the all of them, so that way you could go from coast to coast. Unfortunately, I guess it just wasn't as popular on the Amiga, I guess. But it was, it was decent. It was. It was definitely improvement, but let's check our altimeter and see if that's set. That appears to be set. What about our? Well, that seems to be okay too. It's funny on these on, on this old simulator you might as well be flying IFR, you know. There's not much visual reference here uh, other than a green ground and some lines. <laughs> you can't tell how far down, you know, or how far up you really are without looking at your altimeter. And if you had your rely reliability setting um, lower than a hundred, and your con when when your controls uh, th those VOR radios look like stopwatches, I just or like a little watch. I just <laughs> kind of realized that. But when your uh, equipment malfunction, it just disappeared from the dash. And so if your altimeter disappeared, oh man, that just sucked right there because you didn't know how high you were up or how low. Five miles from the airport, so it has got to be off our wing here. Let's see. Yeah, I believe that's it over there. That looks like that might be an airport over there. What is our altitude at O'Hare? 667, okay. Since we don't have a visual reference, we're going to have to rely on all, all, our altimeter here. So that way when we get to 667... I never flew high on these things because... Well, there was really no point. I 
got to love the frame rate. I think it's like one frame per second or something. <laughs> Super green grass. There we go. That's a airport right over there. Ah! Not too high. We're going to stall. get some flaps down. Now our flaps are right here, this F. That's our N key. Trying to line up on these things was, was not easy, trying to line up with a runway. We had another thing of flaps. See, there's something sticking out here. I don't think that's it. I think it's in here somewhere. a little <laughs> uh, a little too low on the I think I see the runway I think it's over here I think it's this little stick here away here. It's a taxiway. And it's got to load the airport. Well, 
Look at this gobbly gook of mess. Can you tell where the... <laughs> Can you tell where the runway's at? Because I can't. <laughs> it's somewhere in there. It's easier to see at night. That much is for, for certain. there were many times I landed on taxiways and everything else because well there is a runway over here let's see if we can get to this runway And with these old programs, you did not want to do a missed approach. <laughs> this is like the one thing you did not want to do a missed approach on. It's like, I ain't doing no missed approach. What is that little dot out there? Do you see that? There's like a little dot out there in the middle of nowhere. Right. It was right there. What is that? See now we're getting closer. Now we're now we're seeing the actual. See, I, this, I thought this whole thing was a runway. It's not. It's because we're we're way too high. That's why. We're going to land somewhere in here. <laughs> Not quite on the runway. <laughs> this is usually how I used to land on the, on the 64. Because I could never get lined up very well. Now it's like, okay, now how in the world do we know, where do we know where the runways are at and stuff, right? All right, so there is a map here that allows us to... Zoom in and zoom out and stuff. Okay, so here's the airport. Okay, so I think we landed on runway four then. I think, well, we didn't, okay, so we didn't actually land on runway four. We land somewhere in the middle of four. And these things have fuel boxes. And trying to find out where that fuel box is, is always fun. And I don't know, I don't know what that is. What is that Z? What is this? I have no idea what that is. I 
I think that's a runway. I think that's a runway number. Why that's sitting over there, I don't know. Yeah, that looks like a runway number, which is completely out of place. There, we're on the taxiway. And of course, if we look at it in 3D, this is what it looks like. So, not the very easiest thing to, to see. We can see some parking over there. So I think I'm just going to park here. I'm not going to. I'm not going to try to park over there. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, we'll stop. Stop right here. All right. Now let's show you what this looks like at night. So we'll change. We'll, we'll remember that this is at 8:32 because I'm going to set this back there. Now you may be thinking, season. What does that? What does that do? That well, that'll change like the uh, temperature and stuff like that. And then you have to use like the carb heat and stuff, and so that way your plane actually flies. Um, all right. So let's set this to 23, and then we'll head back out. There we go. So there, the whites are the runways, and then the blues are the taxiways. So at night, it's a lot easier to see the runways. During the daytime, it's all white. You can't tell. And of course, to turn on your lights, Control L, and boom, everything turns on. So. Wow. All right. So there we go. There was a uh, sublogic flight simulator for the Commodore 64. Well, I hope you found this interesting. We will do some more flights because <laughs> nobody else is. Maybe there's a reason for that. I don't know. But uh, thanks for watching and uh, let me know what you thought in the comments below and we will see you on another retro flight. I hope you enjoyed the beginning of our world tour and trip down memory lane with this flight simulator. Be sure to check out the other versions of this same flight with different simulators. Why? 
Well, it gives us a chance to look back at what was, how things changed, and it's just fun. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on another flight.